Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in the month of August from worst to best. So if you want to see what they are, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. In particular, eyeshadow palettes. Those are definitely my favorite makeup items to review for you guys. And in the month of August, I tried nine eyeshadow palettes. Before you ask, Natasha Denona Retro is not in this rankings. It will be in next month's because I actually tried that at the beginning of September. But anyways, I like to take a few extra days into the next month to really play with the eyeshadow palettes and make sure I give every palette a fair chance to really rank it where I feel like it belongs. So this past month, I tried nine eyeshadow palettes. It was a little bit smaller than normal, but I must say, you guys, I tried some really great palettes. So we are gonna start off at number nine. Unfortunately, this one was not my favorite, clearly, uh, but this is the Dior eyeshadow quint in early bird now one of the very first days of August I reviewed their birds of a feather collection and some hits and some misses I was really excited for the collection it looked beautiful and unfortunately I just cannot recommend this eyeshadow palette I'm not saying I can't get pretty looks with this because I absolutely can actually on Jose and I's anniversary dinner I wore these three shades and the look was absolutely beautiful but I just can't get behind the price on this for the type of quality that you're getting. This shade right here really does not have any pigment. It just takes a while to get these eyeshadows to work. And again, you can get a pretty look. It's nice. I don't regret picking it up. However, I can't recommend it to you guys. It's not as good as the regular line that Dior has with their eyeshadow palettes. I don't know why they just keep playing around with the formulas and their limited launches. Because this just isn't good. It's not worth it. I don't recommend it. The the look is pretty sure, but not worth the price. They're very expensive. Wasn't as big of a fan as this one. Moving on to number eight. I don't have a problem with this palette. I actually think it's nice and I do recommend it. However, it's just boring in the lineup of eyeshadows that I have. And that is the Charlotte Tilbury Super Nudes Easy Eye Palette. This was a re-release for her Nudegasm collection. And really, you can see why it's ranking on the lower side. It's just very boring. I have all of these colors. Nothing bad to say about the quality. I think they're beautiful. And in my review, I highly recommend that this for mature eyelids because it's not super matte so it's not going to look drying on mature eyelids. It has a slight sheen that's not really going to emphasize too many fine lines and wrinkles and all that stuff. It's just a great formula for mature eyes but I mean I have all of these shades a thousand times over so while I did enjoy this I think it's a very easy to use formula. Great for beginners. I I mean I, I didn't want to use it because I have this all over and over and over again. So so if you feel like this is something that you really like, that you're going to use, or the formulation sounds interesting to you, I do absolutely recommend it. However, it's boring for me, in my personal opinion. <laughs> Moving on to number seven, it is actually the eyeshadow palette that I'm wearing now, and I really, really, really like it at this point. I mean, I have a hard time ranking this low, but I have to. It's just where it fell. This is also from the Dior Birds of a Feather collection. This is Nightbird, and I like this one a lot more than the Early Bird palette. It's really gorgeous colors, kind of out of the box for Dior, but it still sticks with an elegant color story. So this is what I'm wearing on my eyelids right now. The look is absolutely stunning. These colors aren't the easiest to work with. It took a little bit of playing around, fussing and blending to get it to where I want it to be. And the reason that I ranked it lower is just because it is so expensive. However, I absolutely love the colors in here and I just feel like you're gonna get such a pretty watercolor, elegant look 
while still playing with these fun tones. It's just different for luxury makeup. You have the luxury finish on the eyelids, but you still have these fun evening style of colors. So this one is definitely an up to you if you feel like this is worth it. You're not going to get a palette packed with pigment. It doesn't give you that. You can see kind of the subtlety of it all on my eyelid, but that's what I like about it. Very elegant, very sophisticated. It's from Dior. I really like it. I think it's beautiful. However, I, I don't think it's for everybody. I'm not going to recommend it to everybody. The color here, the pigmentation, the finish, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. I personally really enjoy it. I just, it's a bit expensive. Again, it's not Dior's best, but I, I love the looks I get from this. That I can't deny. I have a Charlotte Tilbury Navy eyeliner along my upper lash line to make it even more fun. Really like this one. Number seven, now we're getting into the good stuff. No, JK, number six. But still, this is the good stuff. This is an awesome palette for an awesome price. Earlier in the month, I did a full face of Kimchi Chic Beauty. It's a brand that I've always been very curious about. I think the packaging is super cute. The colors uh, from the brand are very, very vibrant. Sorry, I know better than to have my volume up. But anyways, this is the Kimchi Chic Version Mojito Palette. That's the name. The packaging on the outside is very cute. It looks a little bit more simple, but where the magic is, is it going to be on the inside of the palette? You, of course, have kimchi right here, and then you have the actual packaging itself. And you guys can see in the photos how detailed they are and how well thought out the color story is. And this is a very affordable palette, and the quality is really, really nice. I highly recommend you check out my review to see the look that I pulled out of this. This is more so in the middle, just because, I mean, this isn't a color story that I'm inclined to reach for every day. I tend to stick towards more neutral or subdued tones. These are quite bright, but the fact that you can get bright tones like this at this price is amazing. Love, love, love the packaging, the marketing, and the brand has a lot of other really cool items that I do recommend. So this one is such a cute palette. If you feel like these are colors that you would like, they're a great formula, and there's a lot of other great palettes with different color stories in the brand. So highly recommend this one. This one was really good. Good. Moving on to number five, Huda Beauty came out with her Wild Obsessions collection and so you're going to see the palettes sprinkled in a lot within these last few palettes that I'm mentioning but coming in at the bottom of the trio that was released is the Wild Jaguar palette which I am thoroughly surprised by because I was pretty sure this one was going to be my favorite of the three but I just think for some reason the quality in this isn't as good. However, it's still a gorgeous palette, which is why it's ranking so high. But I just find that this palette works best as like a one and done kind of look. There's so many shimmers in here that it's just too much to layer them all together. But as far as me getting ready for every day, especially when I'm doing weddings on the weekend, I do my makeup as quick as possible, but I still want it to look nice and presentable so that the client trusts me. So I'll just use one of these crease colors, just like one or two, and then I'll pick one of the shimmer shades and put it all over my lid. Absolutely beautiful, but like I said, it's not my favorite. It's just not as creamy as I feel like the other two palettes are, but absolutely beautiful. If you like the glimmery kind of cool, why is this? I turned the volume down on my iPad, but it's still going. Anyways, you don't care. If you like the glimmery kind of neutral colors, one and done look, I think you would really like this. I am recommending it. I'm just letting you know. For some reason, it's a little bit different than the other two, but it's still super good. It's just, I, I don't like the way the colors were laid out quite as much. I wish there was a little bit more mattes in here. I don't know. I'm reaching though. It's a good palette. On to number four. I don't even know if I want to rank this this high, but standalone as a palette, it's wonderful. And that is the Natasha Denona Mini Xenon palette. Gorgeous. I mean, you guys know, I like a cool tone palette. I'm not afraid of a cool tone palette. I like a silver eye. I like a gray eye. Great quality. The only thing is this black it's easy to work with, to blend out. However, it's not easy to pack on. So if you're looking to put this all over the eyelid, 
gets a little sketch. It's not the best black in that regard, but as a deepening black, it's nice. But anyways, this shade is incredible. The mattes blend super easy. The only thing that I'm kind of like eh, about is because I found literally like a $10 dupe and it's the exact same colors from ColourPop. Check out my review if you want more details on that dupe. But as a palette itself, it's really nice. I love the color story of this. I love the quality of this. I don't necessarily recommend this. I think you should get the dupe instead. However, it's a really nice palette and I really like it. So it's ranking here. I really love the looks that I did with it. Natasha Denona Beauty actually posted the photo that I did because I mean, it was a cute look. It was a cute photo. So I do like this. I like this color story. I think it's super pretty, super deep, super smoky, but <laughs> take it with a grain of salt, you know, buy the counterpart that I recommended. Number three, we have another Obsessions palette from Huda. That is the Python palette. Oh my gosh, this one is awesome. Look at the color story here. I feel like the options truly are endless with what you can do with this. In my original review, I did quite a colorful eye. And then in a recent video, I believe it was my monthly favorites, I did a semi-wearable look playing with these three colors right here to kind of tone it down. Really beautiful, great color story, great quality. I know these obsessions can be a little hit or miss, mostly misses. They're not too many hits but I promise you in this launch these are hits these are very good quality phenomenal for the price and the color story in here really does it for me I think it's very well thought out I think there's so much variety in here you can create so many looks I don't have anything bad to say about this so yeah I mean this one's really nice I recommend it if you feel as though this is a color story that you will wear number two is the last palette in the trio <laughs> of the wild obsession this is the Huda Beauty Wild Chameleon. Did not expect for this to be my most favorite of the three. Thought this was going to be my least favorite, but something about the quality in this is so good, you guys. I mean, oh, the mattes are buttery, creamy, smooth, and they are in the other palettes. I'm not, but this one just has a lot more mattes than the other palettes. And the shimmers, especially this one right here, just seems more foiled and rich and creamier than the shimmers in the other. Like, there is not a formula like this in the Jaguar palette for reference. So I've been enjoying this more so for the formula and because the formula is so good to me, I've been reaching for this palette more than the other. So I've been rocking some warm eye looks with this. I love the purple and red combo that they give with this one as well. I think it's very flattering, very complimentary. So super nice. I like this one. Highly recommend them. But I do think with these wild obsessions that you should go for whatever color story you think you're going to like and wear the most. They're all great in their own ways, but that's kind of how they ranked out now that I've played with them a lot more. Number one, I mean, not too much to hype up because I feel like you guys, you already know, we had a new Pat McGrath Mothership palette launch this month. I mean, she hasn't launched a Mothership in a year and she really can't go wrong. I mean, so good. This, of course, is the Hutopian Dream palette, and I know people were disappointed with it, but at the end of the day, as a palette itself, it's a beautiful palette. I love it. I love the looks that I've done. I did a whole review on it. I did a three looks, one palette, and that three looks, one palette video created some gorgeous looks. I mean, let me show you the palette now. Yeah, you know, repetitive, more roses, whatever. I wear roses a lot. The glitter shades are just fantastic. I've had to not use this. Like I've had to push myself to not use it because I needed to use all the other palettes that I'm talking about with you today to really use them multiple times to tell you my thoughts because I've used this probably like six times and I gotta chill, you know? There's only so many days in a month to test out these palettes, but I do recommend this palette from Pat McGrath. I mean, I don't know if you, like, you need it. I don't know what you own and what you don't own. If you have like Divine Rose 2, you, you probably don't need that. But y'all know I'm a collector. And even as a collector, I'm still very happy with this. I love the palette itself. I love the looks that I can create. With that all being said, those are all of the palettes that I tried in the month of September. What month? No, in the month of August. Ranked for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Did you try any good palettes this month? Let me know. If you guys aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would appreciate it if you would. And of course, thank you to those of you who are already subscribed to me and to those of you who liked this video. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Bye, guys. Have a good one. <laughs>